Sounds like most of you guys have used AppExchange apps, so you guys are aware, but it's the number one business app marketplace. We have over 2,500 apps, 2.6 million installs and counting, um, 300 Salesforce One mobile ready apps. Um, we also have huge um, uh, peer reviews uh, on the AppExchange. 80% of customers read reviews first before they download an app, so um, there's huge social proof for all the apps that are on. Um, and 71% of our customers are currently using um, Salesforce apps. There are apps for every type of need that you may have, every industry, every department, um, all types of apps. There's free apps all the way to enterprise apps. Um, and then for any type of need that you may have, long-term, short-term, um, and different types of support. And if you guys want to learn more about apps, if you haven't already done so, go to the Partner Zone, which is right downstairs, and play this game. You guys can win a cool Dreamforce hoodie. Um, all right, so with all the apps on the App Exchange, I, it gets a little overwhelming. Um, I understand, you know, it's hard to find the app that fits the right need for you. So that's why we're here today to talk about five lightweight apps that are really easy to install and relatively cheap, even free. Um, and, you know, we have some great customers here to talk about why they use the apps, how they found them on the App Exchange, and what the business impact was. So, without further ado, I'll hand it over to the, our first speaker, Holly. Good afternoon. I'm Holly Adams. Um, thank you for the opportunity to share how GE Energy Management is leveraging a small app to help us um, facilitate training reduce cost, and bridge the gap between our sales teams and our business units. Um, first, a little bit about energy management. At GE's electrification and automation business, we bring over 100 years of innovation and experience to our customers. We help our customers generate, transmit, distribute, and convert electricity reliably and efficiently. Um, energy management is a $7.5 billion company with over 30,000 employees, and <laughs> sorry, with over 30,000 employees, and Salesforce.com plays a critical role in how we manage our customer relationships. My team is responsible for commercial excellence, which includes simplifying the sales and commercial team's processes, and then integrating those processes within Salesforce.com. Um, Creating lean and streamlined processes help us deliver products and services to our customers um, as fast and efficiently as possible. So the app we chose to help us in our Salesforce.com journey is called CrowdGuide. So CrowdGuide is a training and adoption app that's available for Salesforce.com and it's available on the App Exchange. We were recommended this app by our customer relationship manager with um, Salesforce.com when we expressed a need to have something within the tool that could help us um, give our users instructional guides while they're in the middle of the process. So the application itself sits in your sidebar and displays instructional guides to aid your users in nav navigating through whatever process it is that you're trying to drive. A um, couple key features. It's easily customizable by record type, and it's also customizable by object. So what that means is you can deliver contextualized in data to your users really easily. It's also available in a variety of formats. For example, you can include step-by-step -step instructions, uh, links to videos, um, images, links to documents, whatever, whatever styles of formats you have to, for your training documents. At EM, we, we choose to use several different types of formats for our training so that we can cover uh, many different learning styles. So for our specific use case and why we chose to leverage a tool to help us with training, we have over 3,000 users globally, so it's not always feasible for us to offer classroom-style training. Um, so couple of key benefits. On-demand training. Um, obviously, on-demand means you can choose and select your training anytime, anywhere with any device. Um, another key benefit for us is a positive experience for our users. So we find that 
if we can offer easy access to um, materials and training to give our, our users the knowledge and skills they need to do their job, they're a lot more productive and they're a lot happier. And one of the most critical um, impacts that we found was cycle time. So it really helps us to reduce our cycle time because some of the feedback that we received is that um, with this tool within our instance, we no longer have to have a bunch of um, tickets logged to get us help when, when, when the user's right in the middle of the process. They can just go to the guides, find out where they are in the process. And we also have about 30 or 40 super users globally that we consider kind of our experts um, with Salesforce.com. And it's really relieved the burden on them so that they're not getting so many questions from all of these different users. So it's, it's been really helpful for us. From, from a business productivity perspective, it's really given, CrowdGuide's really given us an inexpensive option. Um, it's literally pennies per user. It's given us an inexpensive op, op, option to deliver training to our users. And another key benefit is the maintenance aspect. So within energy management, we have three business units, um, three distinct business use, units with completely different processes. And CrowdGuide, I'm in a headquarters role, so CrowdGuide has given us the ability to really hand over the controls to our business units because it's real-time customizable. You can immediately go and update it. You don't have to go through a release like you're normally used to when you go in and make changes to your instance. You can go right in and add, add the training guides, and it's really easy and it's really fast. Um, so that's a little bit about CrowdGuide and how we've used it at Energy Management. Um, I would really encourage everybody to download it. It's, I believe, free for use on the um, App Exchange for Sandbox. Thanks. So good afternoon, everyone. I introduced myself earlier, but I'll say it again. I'm Arian Barker Meadows. I'm the Commercial Platforms Digitization Leader for Power Generation Services, which is, again is another General Electric company. Um, I'm here to talk about DrawLoop, which is an app that our uh, business is using. Uh, it's a automated um, generation, automated template generation application, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that. But before I talk about DrawLoop. What I'd like to do is just give you a little bit of background or insight into power generation services so that it, you can help um, understand and, and get a feel for uh, what the, the business need that I'm going to talk about a little bit later. So power generation services, we have about 7,500 employees uh, worldwide. We are operating in about 100 plus countries and we provide services for over 1,500 um, generators that are installed across the globe. We partner with our customers to deliver solutions and um, technology that are that help increase the reliability and the efficiency of those of those generators. Um, so we we again we really help our customers be very competitive um, in their respective fields. And with many of those customers, we have um, multi-year agreements. So the life cycle of those generators are usually about 30 years or so. And so we enter into agreements with them. Um, that helped per, help them with the efficiency of that equipment for over those for that entire life cycle. So to talk a little bit about DrawLoop, so when you look at when you look up DrawLoop, you're going to see DDP, and what DDP stand for, stands for is a document a dynamic document patch, package. So that the great thing about um, DrawLoop is you are able to uh, they've got a, a ton of great fantastic features, but I'm going to just highlight a couple of them for the sake of time. So the first is you're able to automatically merge data from multiple objects across Salesforce. Um, so you're able to export those in either uh, Word, PDF, Excel, PowerPoint. So, so that's one feature. The second feature, um, one of my personal favorites that's near and dear to my heart, is its low complexity configuration. So you don't need a developer to um, manage these templates. So if you can put together a template, you can likely manage it um, within Salesforce or DrawLoop. So let's talk a little bit about um, the business impact and the problem that we were 
um, so we were trying to solve as a business. So our business, we've been using Draw Loop. I, to I told you guys earlier, we've been using Salesforce for probably about six or seven years. And we got to the point where we were finally able to get all of our users to input data into Salesforce, um, but now we couldn't get it out. So um, we went on the hunt looking for a tool that would help us do that. Do that. So we, we came up on a draw loop, and one of the things um, that we found is we were able to, I talked a little bit earlier about those um, multi-year um, agreements that we have with our customers. So our sales process, it's a pretty extensive process, right? So um, it's very long, it's very long cycle, and those users, um, when, when we, we have re reviews on a weekly basis, so we have a group of our, of all of our different functions set at a table on a weekly basis and go over that particular deal. So we have engineering sales, commercial managers, marketing, pricing, and our commercial managers, they are responsible for put, pulling together a document prior to um, this meeting. Well, our commercial managers, we've got about 200 of those ma commercial managers across the globe. They're spending about 35 hours a week combined trying to pull together all this, doc this particular document. So when we went to, to draw loop, um, we were able to now generate that docu document in a matter of seconds as opposed to hours per commercial manager. So keep in mind, they weren't, in, they weren't putting anything different on the document. It was all stuff that was within Salesforce that we just couldn't get out of Salesforce. So, so, we, so then we had, they were able to, instead of hours, now it reduced that cycle da time down to, to seconds. And we also had a standard format across all commercial and then we didn't have the problem with, um, you know, fat fingering numbers or that that sort of a thing. So again, really, again, very, very um, fantastic um, uh, application that it's been for us. So I think that when we looked at Draw Loop initially, we were trying to solve a specific business problem, and we didn't even know we were we didn't even under we were we didn't scratch the surface on what it could do for us. So what we found is we were able to go through and really apply Draw Loop through almost every stage in our sales process. So after we, were, after we um, did the, the initial deal review template, the other piece of the process was, okay, again, this large scope of information, once we won the actual order, we were having to do the same thing. Those commercial managers were replicating um, that documentation into a template, and we were able to solve that problem. Um, and, and then after that, now we're able to have our sales per people generate purchase order acknowledgements directly from Salesforce. And then in a, in a few weeks, the theme and the spirit of keeping the, the, con the customer um, in the forefront of all of our projects. We, 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 our customers are saying, hey guys, you're too slow with just even budgetary proposals. Now we'll be able to generate those budgetary proposals right from draw, draw loop on site with the customer via mobile device um, so that the salesperson can be empowered to give that information to the customer um, and they don't have to wait weeks um, behind in the engineering pipeline. So that's draw loop and that's how um, GE Power Generation Services is utilizing it, so definitely recommend for you guys to go take a look. Yeah, I'm going to in a minute. Hello, everybody. Ooh, yelling. Sorry. Obviously, I'm very easy to talk to you today <laughs> since I try and jumped in front of my friend there. Um, I'm here from LumaSense Technology, and I'm here to talk about an application called Celogy. Um, LumaSense Technologies, uh, we're, we're focused in 2005, though we're comprised of a few companies that started before then. And we're headquartered in Santa Clara. And our goal is, is to focus on, res on resource intense environments, so that, to reduce waste and inefficiency in resource intense uh, processes around the world. We have 250 employees, representatives in over 46 countries, and customers in over 85. And, and that's germane to what we're going to talk about today. Um, we have global centers in EMEA, Asia. South America. We're uh, obviously headquartered in the Silicon Valley. Uh, we're fully ISO manufacturing, uh, fully ISO certified manufacturing facility. So who are our targets? Um, global energy, energy distribution and transmission, generation. Uh, I think a couple of our previous speakers are in that arena. Industrial materials such as manufacturing of glass, uh, metals, what have you. And advanced technologies such as semiconductor. So what does this tell you? We have a very big patch, and we have not a very large sales force. And as a result, this was somewhat unique to me. I've been with this company for a year. As a result, we're seeing less and less data getting entered into Salesforce because of the amount of travel time these guys are spending on the road. At least that's the reason that we're hearing, right? 
Even with Salesforce One, they're saying it. It's a little difficult to get to the individual records that they're trying to reach. So this is why uh, we went with Celogy. They actually reached out to us and demonstrated a product. So stop me if you've heard this before. Uh, you finish another quarter, you know what you won, you know what you lost, but you have very little idea of how you got there. So why is this the case? Well, you always have a few people who still consider Salesforce more of a chore than actually something that helps them in their daily process, right? Um, you can enforce, like we do, the reasons for winning, uh, excuse me, reasons for losing opportunity. You have to you know, categorize and then describe the reason for that loss. But simply put, your activity level remains poor to non-existent. And uh, your intellectual capital, which you know, as a business analyst, that's what I really want to focus on. You know, how many touch points are resulting in a sale? How, what are the, what are the you know, feedback on those touch points? So what was our solution? Well, as I mentioned, Celogy. So LumaSense and Celogy, we needed a low cost, a big impact solution. I was way over budget. Um, since I came on board a little over a year ago, I've doubled our Salesforce expense, you know, bringing in other departments, making sure we had licenses across the board so we could collaborate on, on uh, workloads and processes throughout the organization. Um, so we, what we find was with Celogy, we had a streamlined mobile app to focus, focus on our individual needs. It has fully customizable opportunity and contact layouts independent of your Salesforce layouts. Now, these, these are constructed by your admin. He will basically say, these are the fields I want you to pay attention to when you're in the field, when you conduct your meetings, when you meet with your customers that you would want to update, uh, that we would like to see feedback on. With that, everyone hold the breath. OK, good. So I'm going to give you a demonstration, a brief demonstration of the product itself with this mock-up that we have. Oops. OK. So when you launch into Celogy, the first thing you're going to see are your weekly meetings. They're brought up. Our, our salespeople actually use Outlook to book all their meetings and invite all their contacts, right? Because they want to make sure with that kind of travel schedule, you're not arriving at a location and your customers forgot that you were going to show up, forgot that you were going to meet. With that information, and I'll open this. With this information, what Celogy did is it pulled in did the appropriate you know, opportunity. Oops, sorry. It brought the address into the actual meeting, which if you click in the address, they'll use local traffic to give you drive time to, you know, so that you make that meeting on time. And it also brings in the accounts, uh, the contacts, excuse me, that are tied to that, tied to that meeting, including social profile data. Uh, my friend's laughing. I was explaining that uh, I had a guy go on his first Celogy call. He was in the greater Northwest United States the other day, and he's like looking at the people he's about to meet with. And there's a guy standing shirtless in his bathing suit holding a beer up. Some people still haven't really learned to uh, monitor their social profile. So one thing that you can see right here uh, is that you have a contact here. You can open this up. And you have all your contact information. This is great if you're on the road and you're about to be late. Quickly dial into that contact you're going to have the meeting with. OK. Oops, sorry. But here, you see that little blue cloud icon? That means that that contact came from your phone or your Outlook, but is not yet in Salesforce, OK? And that's why you have this very simple Add to Salesforce button. And we're kind of a, I don't want to call it a niche industry, but we often trade salesmen you know, back and forth between companies who do the same thing we do. So they often will show, they'll often you know, get hired at a company and have contacts throughout the industry. And those are generally on their phone. They're generally in Outlook. These guys, if they set that meeting up with that contact, they can quickly just, with a touch of a button, they can pull up, make sure validate the information, click Save. There he is. He's added to Salesforce. Okay. So um, let's go back. So this is sort of the give, right? We're helping organize the salesman's day. We're keeping them on track. We're, you know, this is the give to the sales team, something that they really like. But what do I want? I want to see that activity history. I want to understand what's happening on these deals, right? So let's take a look at the meeting we had previous earlier in the day with GE Power and Water. So you see, there's a button here, essentially, log call, right? So this is what I would like to know, right? Quickly, they can add a meeting note. That's going to go into their activity history. Tasks, they can quickly assign a task, a follow-up task, why it's fresh in their mind. They can even edit the opportunity with those fields that I think that they would potentially want to edit in the field. And I've gotten some feedback and additional ones to add. So when you see here stage and competitor, that's because that's what I wanted to be available to edit after the meeting. Again, you have your contact information. You can add your contact notes. 
You can change your role on the opportunity. That's because that's, again, something that they suggested I add. Click Save, and that's going to push into Salesforce. And this can be done offline. You know? So I mean, literally, if you look at what I just did, I could have this done, complete meeting notes, update my contact, update my opportunity before I even make it back to my car. So it's, you know, the way that we describe it to our sales guys is that we're giving you the tool to really you know, stay, on stay on task. And the way we talk about it behind closed doors is we've moved the last excuse. Right? This is, we're saying, hey, look, you got the tool. We need that activity history. But you know, when you're on the road, you're not necessarily going to be talking. You're not necessarily going to want to update simply those records that, for which you have meetings. So if you just come over here and click into your op oop, wrong button. Click into my opportunities, it's going to bring up your pipeline. Okay, so you can quickly go into an, another opportunity and update your opportunity on the fly. And you'll see the, you'll see the Celogy timeline, the activity history, located at the bottom of the opportunity. Same with contacts. Quickly go into contacts. Pull up those contacts you just had the meeting with, and there's the meeting history details on the contact record. So what this is doing is really sort of adding flavor, what we call it, a color to our opportunities. I, as a business analyst, am responsible for going in at the end of each quarter and designing a pathway to you know, increase overall profitability to the next quarter. But I can only do so if that data is, av data is available for me to analyze. And as a Salesforce admin, I, I naturally went into Salesforce administration as a data analyst to try and build rules to collect data. But this is covering that last point that we weren't doing, which is capturing the activity history, that contact point, the flavor of that deal. If that salesman's going in the end of the quarter and he's closed out, closed lost, you know, a handful of opportunities saying, you know, I didn't capture these quarter, this quarter, and he's going in putting some notes, that's not really fresh information. It doesn't really tell you about the journey. So Celogy is a great product. I recommend, if you have a business model where you have salespeople who are out there conducting meetings, I highly recommend it. Actually, I just forgot one thing. Okay, one other thing I want to make sure I break, point out is that Celogy can identify the difference between in-person meetings, like this one at Dutch Royal Shell, or it can identify con calls. Okay? And this one is identified as a WebEx. You simply click into that WebEx details, click, click it, dial it for you, and it will dial into the meeting. Anyone who's dialed into con calls or multiple con calls in a day from their cell phone, I know you're going to appreciate this feature. Okay? And with that, um, I'd like to introduce the Celogy team. They're sitting here in the room. If anyone would like to talk to them about the product after, after the presentation. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, you want to advance the slides? All right, next up we have Geraldine Gray. Hi, I'm Geraldine Gray. I'm a Salesforce MVP and I run Endium, which is a um, Salesforce.com practice based in Houston. We have a lot of oil and gas customers. We have a lot of tech companies that we work for. And uh, we're also part of the, essentially with the professional services arm for a lot of the app exchange partners. So we get a lot of business from app exchange partners. So we deal with, I don't know, probably 10 apps a month, maybe more. I want to talk to you about a couple of our favorites. and. I really like the Celogy app. I can already see some use cases. Um, I'll, I've always taught people or our users to use Siri when they're updating their activities, right? There's the laziest person in the planet cannot not use Siri for updating their activities. Um, so let's talk a little bit about uh, Task Ray. There's my clicker. There we go. Okay. Okay, Task Ray by Bracket Labs. So Bracket Labs has been around for a little while. They have a few different apps. Um, one that I actually think is really cool, uh, sexy, and incredibly useful, moreover being cool and sexy, it's incredibly useful, is uh, Task Ray. So this is an app that we use. This is an app that we have implemented for several of our customers. This is an app that we're going to continue to implement for several, many of our customers. Essentially, if you have a process, and we all have a business process, right? So we all have stuff we have to do, um, processes we have to follow. You can templatize your process in Salesforce using Task Ray. And you can make those processes uh, disciplined, scalable, repeatable, and to some extent, automated. 
Uh, we've done a lot of automation with some additional code for uh, ADP, who's a current customer that we're working with. And um, what we've done is they have 23 different processes in order to um, deploy apps, right? So this is, this is uh, ADP Lightspeed. They're a branch of uh, ADP, the big payroll company. They implement apps for their customers who are selling, um, okay, so now I'm going to sound silly, but basically things go vroom, 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 vroom. So speedboats and all kinds of uh, recreational vehicles. Uh, dealerships sell these, apps, sell these products and then they need a way to manage the actual sale. So ADP's job is to then implement a bunch of uh, layered apps that go on top of the, the, um, the point of sale tools, right? So at the moment we're implementing uh, 23 different processes which we've put into Taskray, we've made them templates. And every week ADP has come back and said, we can save time by having Taskray because now we don't have to have this meeting. Now we don't have to have this report. Now we don't have to have people in different systems. So we've been able to just automate the whole uh, process for them. They still have to have humans, right? So they've still got to have people who um, actually get the work done. But we've been able to automate the creation of the, of the app, of the uh, Taskway projects, and then assign them to all the right people. Uh, also, what's really fantastic about Taskway is that not only do people absolutely love the interface, you can think of all the different use cases for that Gantt chart um, or plan view that they have there. But um, it's all on the platform, so it's, you stay within Salesforce. They um, iterate on it about four or five times a year, so they really listen to their customers and there's lots of uh, feedback. When you ask for a feature, it's probably going to be put in there. And um, there's also free dashboards that they provide you with. So we can actually see what it looks like. Oh, yeah. OK, so here I am. So my name's uh, Eric. I hope it's Eric. No, anyway, Eric made this video for me. So here I am. I'm in Taskray. And is my video flowing? Is it moving? Yeah, OK, all right. Uh, OK, so I'm in Taskray. So what am I seeing here? So I am seeing all of my tasks. So they've, they're using it here as an example for, um, I think they're organizing a lot of uh, Dreamforce um, pieces. Right, so they're getting ready for Dreamforce. But what they're also doing is they're templatizing their process so that everybody knows what's going on. So you can add uh, contributors as you, contributors as you um, work through the process. So, oh, there we go. OK, so they're going to pick up um, Blakely. And Blakely is going to be assigned to take part in a task. You can have um, within these little, see these little teeny tiny um, ticks? The little ticks imply that there's a checklist within the task, so you don't have to have, if you have uh, 10 pieces to your process, you can have checklists within your task, which is super useful. You can add a roll-up summary on those checklists so that people can't close out the tasks or they can't move them to the next phase until those um, tasks are being closed out. You can set it up so that when your um, project moves along in the process, so here we've got uh, holding, prioritized, started, and finished. As your project moves along, you can kick off workflows to your customer. So you can email your customer with, uh, for example, your implementation specialist is Amy, and uh, your project coordinator is O'Brien. So you can uh, push it through the process, and you can push all of that out to your customer. And then as a salesperson, I can go to my opportunity, and I can see where I am in the status of my projects. Uh, this little call out here is something that we built over the weekend. I'm not kidding, built it over the weekend. It's a little visual force page, and what we've done is we have made it so that when, the, um, when Lakshmi closes her opportunity, it will say to her, do you want to generate projects? Takes her to this little visual force page, and she says, yes, and these are the projects related to my opportunity. Here's my start and end dates, and here are the people who are um, part of that project. When she saves this, it's going to create a master project, for, because they might sell many different layered apps within a one opportunity. So it's going to create the master project, and then it's going to show you all of the mini projects inside. So we've got all of this um, automated for them. So it's, it's really cool. And the task rate team are absolutely fantastic to work with. Okay. So then the next thing I want to talk about is um, Field Trip. Field Trip is free. You can't beat free. Uh, Field Trip is also at least five years old. I remember speaking about Field Trip in Dreamforce 2010. So there you go. It's been around a long time. Um, and there are other tools that do similar things now, but most of them are paid. And uh, 
Dream, uh, Field Trip is really is kind of an oldie but goodie. Um, and it's very, very, very easy to use. It's hard to get it wrong, right? Some of the other um, apps that are out there that compete with Field Trip, either they're paid or they're um, a little bit more complicated. You need more of a developer skill to use it. Uh, we tend to use Field Trip in most of our customers' orgs where they've already uh, implemented or maybe they've self-implemented. Maybe they've got an org that is several years old. Um, one of the challenges that customers have is they know they have customers, but they don't always have the data behind the customers. What you can do with Field Trip is install it from the App Exchange, and you can run reports and you can run list views about show me which fields are not populated. So it will show you the number of uh, records and the percentage of the fields on those records, field by field, that are populated. And then you can use that data to, say back, to send back to your sales team or send back to your customer service team. You know, this important information is missing from the customer profile. We can't get a single view of the customer if we don't know all of this data about them. And so you can push it back to the salespeople or the service team or the marketing team, and they can then enrich the data. And then um, as you're doing, for example, a marketing campaign, now you've got everybody has industry without making industry necessarily required field. Um, a use case that we used it for, so I call it connecting the ancient dots, because everybody has crummy stuff in their Salesforce orgs that has just been, it was a good idea at the time, it's been abandoned. Um, when you feel, see that something is populated on 100% of the records, it's either a system field or it's a workflow, because nobody is that good, um, and people always get around data entry. And if you see something that's populated on maybe 2% of the records, then it implies that you can probably get rid of that field, it doesn't have a lot of value, it's just cluttering up the page. So you could um, export the data, archive the field, and um, it'll make it easier for your users, which is exactly what we're doing with pros pricing. So pros pricing, we did a project with them this summer. It was about five months. Um, they had bought two other companies. They had now had three Salesforce orgs. We had to merge all the data, all the people, and all the processes into one. You can imagine how terrifying that was, right? Because also they're a big data company, so that was kind of scary. Um, but anyway, we used field trip, right? So this free little app that's been out there forever. So what we did was we looked at not just the volume of records that they had in their Salesforce org, but we looked at the value of the data that they had in there. Because they've bought these companies and now they need to increase their customer intimacy and increase the knowledge they have on each customer so they can better target and better look after their customers, better sell to them. And so by using field trip, we were able to just kind of say, this field has been here for three years and it's 1% populated. We know that when we're doing the data cleanup, we don't need to, um, we don't need to worry. We, we brought it over, but we don't need to worry about it afterwards. So typically with our customers, we often have a project which we just call Salesforce implementation, uh, simplification or project bleach, which is where you just uh, do a lot of cleanup on all the old fields that people have kept and, and not needed. So um, that's Field Trip, it's free, and Task Ray on the App Exchange. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Um, so we have about five minutes for any questions that you might have in the audience for any of our speakers. Go ahead. It is a similar tool, and we did the comparison. And ultimately, I mean, draw loops seem to, to, to better fit our needs. Um, one of the things I think that was big for us is being able to, um, from a functional standpoint, not have to have an you know IT or developer um, formulate those uh, those uh, different um, templates. So that was big for us. Um, and then there was also the expense difference as well. So it was for us. Right? So. Uh, so we actually use DrawLoop, it's one of our apps, um, we also implement it for our customers, and um, we use it because I find that it's easier. Um, love both teams, love both products, prices are very similar, but uh, we use it particularly for our customers who aren't so technical because they can self-manage. It's easier to self-manage because with Conga you need to know parameters and um, you need to know a little bit of a... Uh, I call it algebra, but it's more like formulas. It's a lot more technically yeah. complex. Can you do as much on draw loop as you can with Conga? Everything. Yeah, yeah. So even with all the parameters, all the such coding? Yeah, we use yeah. it to generate all of our documents out of our Salesforce, and then we have it linked in with DocuSign, and it all comes, goes out through uh, draw loop and DocuSign, comes back into Salesforce. Okay, thank you. When you use FieldTrack mm -hmm. uh, to analyze the fields in Salesforce, 
does it can it only tell you this field is populated or it's not populated, or can it also bring back it is populated and with? You know, no, it'll only tell you which yes no. the percentage of records that it's populated on and um, the number of records that it's populated on. But you could run a report that would then say, show me where e x equals blank. The uh, Celogy app, mm -hmm. is there a cost to that? Or is that a free app? Well? It's, there, it's a cost, but again, it's a low price solution. Um, I, you know, I was way over budget, and uh, when they priced it out for us, we saw it as an absolute no-brainer, to be honest with you. Is, that, is, that, is it a license that you get one per, per person? Or yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, we'll stick around afterwards if you guys have any questions for a few minutes. So um, thank you guys for coming.